Oh, well, my name is Janice Long, and uh, Billy is interviewing me, and I'll try not to sniff and tell me off if I rub it on, because I get nervous when I'm being interviewed. And, um, it's two and a half hours, Monday to Thursday, 7.30 to 10. And on Friday, I do a different show, which is a review show of new singles and get a couple of guests in. So that's what I do. Now, for people who never come to England, who never hear your show, how would you sort of best describe it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's just... I. I, I think of it as being eclectic musically I mean there's a bit of everything in there, predominantly new stuff, um, virtually no chart records, the only exceptions being, should the Jesus and Mary Chain get into the charts or the Smiths I will carry on playing it because nobody else will play it anyway and I probably played it you know, long before it got into the charts um, but I, I include all sorts of stuff, I mean you know, some blues, some jazz um, totally new bands we give sessions to um, there's myself and um I've got a, a producer called Mike Hawks and there's a researcher who works on the show and a secretary who's more than a secretary. Um, between us, we go and see loads and loads of gigs and listen to stacks of demos and ring bands up and ask them to come in and do live sessions. I mean, we do an awful lot of pre-recorded sessions as well. And when I talked with Simon from the Golden Horde, he said that you had the, those guys over here. That was my favourite session from last year, the Golden Horde. Um, in fact, it's gone out four times now, which is, is quite unusual four times in the space of something like eight, nine months. Um, I mean, we, we, we cover the whole of the United Kingdom. Actually, the, the, there's a lack of bands from Wales, to be perfectly honest with you, but um, but we do, I mean, we, we you know, um, I mean, ERA as well, obviously, we, we include bands from there. And I spend a lot of time going around to see these bands and booking them for sessions. Didn't actually see the Golden Horde, I haven't seen them to this day. Um, but just liked st uh, stuff that they'd sent to me. Yeah. Now, I've heard bands, you know, English bands come over to the States. There was one band I heard come over, and they were being interviewed on the station KLX, and they said, well, well there's no radio in England. There's only one radio show, and that's John Peel. <laughs> but I've also heard people, since I was here, mention your name a lot up in, in Northern Ireland, also in Dublin, but they mentioned you and John Peel in the same breath. Or else they'd say, oh, there's another guy, um, Andy Kershaw, I think they said was good, very good too. But they said, well, it's just nighttime radio. And to me, that's something different because it's, the radio is different there, but is it true to say that it's divided into nighttime yes. and daytime? Yes, undoubtedly. Um, and, I, you know, it really makes me cross, actually. And I, I hate this thing that producers have that, oh, that must be nighttime music because it's on an independent label or because it's on a green sleeve label, which is absolutely stupid. I mean, most of the time I'm playing pop music, but the band happened to be on an unusual label or they've got a funny name, you know, and because they're called <laughs> the Close Lobsters, it must be weird, it must be left field, which is absolutely ludicrous. If, if people took the time to listen to the stuff that they got in, they would realise that they could be far more exciting on daytime radio. Um, the other thing is, um, here at Radio 1, they have a playlist. And so the daytime people stick to this playlist. And um, I just find that, personally, I find that really boring. You just get heavy rotation of the same stuff. And then so I wonder why the charts don't change. So you have a lot of freedom then. Can, you can play anything you want? Yeah. That's great, and you get paid for it too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's really weird, because I don't, I'll be honest, I don't think of myself as a DJ. I'm not a DJ. I'm not one of the, I can't do all of that slick patter and, you know, sagging records and mixing this and all perfectly timed. I happen to be a fan of music who's allowed to sit in a studio for two and a half hours a night and say, hey, look, you know, this is really, really good and let's hope that you like it too. Now, as far as the new music, you said you go uh, with um, your secretary and your producer to a lot of gigs. Is that how you hear most of the music or is it with sitting down and listening to all the demo tapes? Or? Um, well, a lot of it obviously comes in on record and I al always say to new bands that um, it can be as cheap to make a, a record um, and to make you know, like a demo tape and you have more chance of having your record heard than a demo. Um, so a lot of bands have started doing that. Uh, the other thing I do is I obviously get like about 100 demo tapes a week and I take a big Marks and Spencer's carrier bag for home at the, the weekend. And I go through them, and then I pass them on to several mates who've got different musical tastes. Because mm -hmm. I don't believe that I've got the God-given right to sort of make the decision. So I always let other people hear them as well, hear stuff. That's another way of hearing new stuff, and then obviously going to see bands. So there are three ways. That's how you do it. Now, with, with your day, when you have the bands come in and do the sessions, do you think maybe you'll end up having records the way they have the John Peel sessions released? Um, yeah, there are talks about that. Um, that in fact, I actually um, started, to, when I joined Radio 1, I used to do a Saturday night show. And we actually had plans then to release sessions, but um, 
the, the, the record company we were dealing with folded, so that was the end of that. And then I moved on to doing um, the nighttime show that I'm doing now. But yes, we are going to, because we've got lots of good stuff that people would love to get their hands on, you know, all Sisters of Mercy stuff and the, the Cure and people like that that nobody else has got, so... Yeah, because those are really popular, I know, well, among certain people in the States. How how are they uh, selling in England? Are they selling really well, people the John Peel session? John Pe- oh, yeah, yeah. And we went to Japan, Peely and I, um, in October to do programs over there. And um, you could buy his records in the shop there. He was ever so proud. He kept sort of going, that's me, that's me. So how many has he got out so far? Oh, the stacks and stacks. I've, I've lost count. They're all sorts. And they seem to be coming out virtually every month now. Because from looking like at the, on the front of each one, they have the same list. It's like, I mean, it looks like for years we can be expecting them. Well, yes. I mean, when you think, you know, that he's doing, uh, recording a couple of new sessions every week, I mean, he could go on ad infinitum. It's the only thing I don't like, actually, about the records is the cover. It makes me feel sick when I try to read it. It makes me go all gauzy because the writing is so small. Yeah, and also too, I know there's a few bands like the new Micro Disney and also the Stars of Heaven. Their mm-hmm. LPs, even though they're not on that label, they have some John Peel tracks. Right. Lots of bands do that because our sessions. I mean, the standard um, is very, very good, and they've got a good engineer and it's a really good studio. And you do find that um, an awful lot of bands will say to you afterwards, "Can we buy the tapes to include on an album, or can we um, use one track for a B side or an A side, or can we even use the producer?" An awful lot of people tend to come back to us to use the producer. For, for records. Now I've read uh, in some interviews where bands say that you know unless I get on your show Janice Long or else I get on John Peel that there's no way I'm going to break it in England. You think that that's true or? Um, well, I suppose. <sighs> Yes, I suppose in many ways um, it is their only outlet because there's only one network radio station so it's the only way that the whole of the country are going to hear what you're doing. Um, I think that's a shame. That's wrong. What about Capital Radio? What 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 is that? Is that kind of like a top forty? Well, it's um like a commercial local radio station. It serves London, and they do. Um, actually, I d- I'll be honest with you. I very rarely listen to it. Only if um, I'm in somebody else's car and they've got it on. Um, and I'm not. I mean, at home radio wise, I tend to listen to Radio Three or Radio Four. So that's it. Yeah. Or oh, there's a guy, a guy on my local radio station who's very funny because he's, you know, the the, um, the epitome of, of a 1972 DJ, and he's highly entertaining. He sort of talks in that hey voice, you know. And it's what all, station is this? Up to the hour, um, Radio 210. So I just listen to him for the, the sheer fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, getting back to the independents, um, some people say that, well, now, you know, like independent labels have been put nearly ten, a decade around and that they've sort of fallen into the same pitfalls that the majors had and that's, it sort of defeats the purpose. What do you, like, I mean, now you look in any of the magazines and there's like a whole set of charts for independents. What do you think? Do you think that, you know, labels like Rough Trade are kind of predictable and that it's uh, almost as inaccessible for a lot of bands to get onto them as it would be for the majors? Yes, I think it is, and that's why I always say to bands, why don't you just set up your own label and release your own stuff? Um, and and thankfully, a lot of bands are doing that. I think that, that that's the way that they've got to do it. I mean, they don't want to be messed around by people. And the awful thing is, I mean, in, in the end, they're all run by accountants, record companies. I mean, that that's the feeling I get. I mean, you get um, people like Alan McGee from Creation or uh, Rob Lloyd from, from Vindaloo, I mean, really trying to do things. But in the end, they, they tend to get swallowed up by your WEAs or your EMIs or whatever, which is a great shame. Well, one thing I like about it is that, and you play an important role in this too, is like getting the music out to the whole nation, that you've such a turnover. I mean, there's so, I mean, it's... The American charts tends to be stagnant. I mean, you have Billy Joel and you have certain ones that are just like up there, Bruce Springsteen forever and ever. Whereas here you'll have a real cross and you'll have brand new bands and the old standards too. But uh, one criticism that people I know often level at uh, British music is that it's sort of flavour of the week. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's true. Um, that's Andy Kershaw, by the way. He's just going fast. Um, yeah, that's true. Um Especially with chart music, the, 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 the Gallup chart. I mean, you've got, at the moment, there's a band coming through called Curiosity Kill the Cat. And you know that they're going to be around for this year, but possibly next year they won't be here. Or Five Star, you know, uh, happened with them. I mean, th- th- that's the good thing, I think, with the 
independent scene is that you don't have that. You don't have that sort of flavour of the month. I mean, you know, the fall have been around for a long time now. You've got the Smiths who've been around for such a long time. And um, that that doesn't happen. And, and that's good. That's good. But you see, the, the problem is the people who are in the charts are put there by either the baby boom generation of um, the sort of people who are 40 uh, years old who are buying music so they buy all the like really nice um, bland stuff that, that, that's Billy Joel stuff or what have you um, and then you've got the kids who are buying Five Star or Curiosity Kill the Cat or Aha but they grow out of it terribly terribly quickly and that's why you just keep getting the, the turnover here But from all the music you hear do you think like that the English music scene is in a healthy state that there's a lot of good stuff and promising stuff on the way? Yes, I think there is. Um, I mean, I'm, 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 st I'm still waiting f for, for something. Um, I mean, every, everybody sort of harps back to 1976 and um, the anarchy that, that was there then. And I, I still feel, I mean, looking at, say, a programme like Top of the Pops these days, um, you're going to watch it and your mum and dad are going to like it. And I think that's wrong. I mean, I, when, I, when I was a kid and watched Top of the Pops, my mum and dad used to hate everything that was on. He can't sing, uh, can't hear the words, he looks like a woman, he's got makeup on, he must be gay, all of that. And um, now it's also terribly, terribly safe. There's a lot of stuff going on outside the charts, which is good, but I would like to see that element of aggressiveness on the telly. I'd love to see it there, but sadly it's not. So were you in radio in 1976? No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, what was I doing in 1976? I was actually living in a tent in Amsterdam. So were you part of the the punk movement? Not really, because I didn't come back till 77. So, um, but I, I got into it very quickly and I got very excited. It was weird actually being in Amsterdam and, you know, listening to, to all of the crap that was on there. And then, then coming home here and thinking, my God, what's yeah. going on while I've been away? It's brilliant. Yeah. So are you surprised that Susie and the Banshees are still around? I don't think Susie and the Banshees are as good as they used to be, quite frankly. I think it's a bit of a shame. Um, uh, but now I'm not surprised that they're still around because they're the, like the acceptable face of what people would think of as being weird. Now, I've spent the last week in Ireland and I've done so much interviewing, you know, just been going and just listening to records and getting records. And it seems to me that it's pretty healthy, the music scene over there. Do you, and I know you've travelled over there with the, the uh, BBC road shows, yes. or you called? Yes, I went to Northern Ireland last year. Oh, I mean, I think there's a wealth. There was actually um, one point last year where most of my show had Irish music in it. One night I sat there and I thought, hang on, this is really strange, 15 records from... Ireland, you know, um, and there are lots of bands over there that that I'm into, and we've booked in session: Tie the Boy, Aslan, The Golden Horde, Cry Before Dawn, um, Stars of Heaven. You know, yeah, it's very, very healthy. Now, how do you hear of them? Do you have some sort of a hookup with uh, Dave Fanning? <laughs> no, I don't. Actually. It's just the same roots. Nice people send you tapes. Well, I like Dave Fanning. Yeah, people just send me tapes. He's great. He's a great bloke. Um, but people just send me tapes, or they send records over. Can, you can't pick up uh, Dave Fanning's show though here, can you, radio too? I did actually one night on the motorway, I was in a mate's car and we managed to get it and um, I was moaning because he got the um, public image limit <laughs> before me and I was really? sitting in the car going, oh I hate him, I hate him. <laughs> but um, occasionally you can. Are there any artists that you think people should look out for? Oh let me think. My mind always goes blank. You always think of loads. I'll just put it on pause. Yeah. You know, like the way you say nighttime and daytime radio are different. So I'm sure the audiences are different. Like, yes. how how different are they? Well, I'll tell you what I did because they have they do surveys, not surveys, reports here at the BBC about your shows, and they get this p bunch of people who sit on a panel for two years and decide whether they like you or not. And um, I kept getting like these really duff reports back. So I said, well, I'm sure this this can't be right. The people who are on the panel are not representative of my audience or John Peel's audience. They're not going to like what we're doing at all. I said I want to conduct a survey, so we did. We uh, said to, to nighttime listeners, look, send in for the survey. Thousands of people did. This was particularly for my show. Anyway, at the end, of the, we gathered the results, and they're between the ages of 15 and 24, left wing, read The Guardian. Now, daytime, when they did a survey, it was the sun. So, I mean, you know, immediately, you know, you've got quite a different audience. Um, that they, they were into politics, they've... Uh, Something voted Labour, didn't I? Um, 
uh, liked current affairs, um, were into theatre, art, you know, all sorts of, of things. So we definitely know who our audience are. Well, that must have definitely uh, uh, reinforced your argument to present uh, various cultural affairs too, right? Yeah, definitely. That's interesting. What age were the, the, the daytime were the same age group? I don't know. I don't know for, for daytime. We, this was just a survey that we did. Which I would have thought they would have even been older than that. You know, you're, but your listeners too. Well, I mean, obviously you're going to get either yeah. side. I mean, daytime, I reckon the average must be older because when you think that, you know, Radio 1 is in factories and offices and places like that and school kids are yeah. at school, aren't they? <laughs> 15-year-olds are studying for their own levels. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a band called The Christians who I think are really good. I think they're, they're smashing. Um, Golden Horde, I mean, I... I'm a fan of them. In fact, we're booking them for another session this week. What did you think of the Time Bandits when they got together, Nicky Sudden and uh, Sean Fien? I like Nicky Sudden very much. And, uh, yeah. What else, um, before I forget, let me rattle off this. Um, Hot House. They're really good. They're from London. They've just got their first single out, but I think they're going to be huge. They've got a, a girl vocalist called Heather Small who's got a superb voice. Sounds American, I suppose, really. Um, Pop Will Eat Itself. Uh, Soup Dragons. Um, Age of Chance have got to make it this year. They're so good. They do a cover of Kiss, don't yes. they? Yes, yeah, which is magnificent. And I think Prince has heard it. Apparently he approved of it. The Soup Dragons I like a lot. They're so like the Buzzcocks, aren't they? Yes, a lot of people say that. But What do you think of Pete Shelley now? I like Pete Shelley. I keep bumping into him and he's he's still sort of, you know, having a go. Not 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 as good as as early Pete Shelley stuff, but... Yeah, I guess it's kind of hard, you know, if you do something incredible, it's hard to surpass it, I mean, to live up to that. Towards your satellites and keep your hands to yourself, and before that, further and slow train to dawn. Here's Johnny Osborne and Doug Blake playing. As the Smiths and shoplifters of the world unite, and before that you heard uh, Johnny Osborne and Doug <coughs> Plate playing. Oh, gosh, this cold still getting to me. Here's Chaconia Youth and Into the Groovy. Chaconia Youth and Into the Groovy. And uh, now for the final track from Westworld, and this is King Creole. On Monday show, Susie and the Banshees in session, a new session from them. But G is coming in to talk about Brazilian music and bring in some Brazilian records. And Frank Partridge will be talking about something or other that's uh, featured in the news. Um, I'll be back on Radio 1 tomorrow evening between a quarter to six and seven o'clock when uh, we'll be reviewing a selection of the week's new releases. Uh, my guests tomorrow evening will be Taffy and Fish from Marillion. Next on Radio 1, Virgin, Richard Branson's Immaculate Conception, Part 2, followed by Andy Kershaw between 10 and midnight in stereo. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Here's Ven Jericho, and this is Letter 4. <laughs> I mean, everybody sort of harps back to 1976 and um, the anarchy that, that was there then. And I, I still feel, I mean, looking at, say, a program like Top of the Pops these days, um, you're going to watch it and your mum and dad are going to like it. And I think that's wrong. I mean, I, when I, I was a kid and watched Top of the Pops, my mum and dad used to hate everything that was on. He can't sing, I can't hear the words, he looks like a woman, he's got makeup on, he must be all of that. And... Um, no, it's also terribly, terribly safe. There's a lot of stuff going on outside the charts, which is good, but I would like to see that element of aggressiveness on the telly. I'd love to see it there, but sadly it's not. BBC Radio 1's Janice Long, Britain's number one female disc jockey. Hear Janice Long talk about the British music scene and other things this coming Monday afternoon, February the 9th, on KALX Berkeley.